Well, it has been confirmed that it will be a public holiday in Bloemfontein tomorrow. People will avoid going to work. A wonderful victory indeed, and well done to Bloemfontein Celtic, uh, beating uh, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, think convincingly in the end. And uh, Trot Pulotti did mention the fact that uh, Dawes' kick on there has had an outstanding game, uh, called for him to be uh, man of the match, and I think everybody was like in mind in terms of that shot. What was he doing special? Because uh, he, he was playing out of the skin today. No, I'm sure simply because he's playing from the team that he has actually been loaned from. Uh, he went out, wanted to indicate to them that, look, I'm actually enjoying myself here, as I indicated during the interview. Uh, we have seen him winning a lot of tackles in the middle field. Not only that, but his passes were very, very, very accurate. Uh, uh, he was more, more very much influential to the whole game for Celtics today. And that's the difference out of the whole uh, uh, match tonight. All right. A very frustrated man has been shaking his head the whole <laughs> night here in the studio. Dr. Kumano, it didn't work in the end. W w what did the coach get wrong? What did the players not quite understand? Well, there are a lot of factors that contribute uh, to the loss tonight. Um, but I must say that, uh, you know, the tactical discipline was not there. I mean, you look at Swarango Vesel, now and then he was always in the middle of the park. And uh, the shape was not there, obviously. Playing with Kilambe, you've got uh, Sean Bartlett. People who really need wing plays, players, you know, whereby you take on a defender, bring in that square, square, square pass for them to finish. But it was not there. And uh, it was very evident whereby Skara, whenever he gets the ball in the middle of the park, when he loses it, it's a counter-attack against Kaiser Chiefs. And yet you have Mayo and uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy, who I, th I thought probably the pace of the Bloemfontein Celtics was too much for them. Because in today's game, it's all about speed. If you don't have it, if your team doesn't have speed, you ain't going to win any game. And this is what uh, uh, Kaiser to expose them. You look at the failure, they couldn't even probably stop the guys. They only used their body and committed city fouls, whereby they, you know, uh, they scored from them. Look at the second goal. Tactically, I mean, where was uh, Bua staying? Why, why was he standing there? Because he was not, uh, blocking the view of the keeper. And he, he wasn't even closing was not down. even closing the guy yeah. down. I mean, you know, we, there are so many factors that we, I mean, contributed uh, on that. But uh, having said that, I mean, that's the name of the game, obviously, uh, the technical team, uh, technical team have uh, probably learned from it, and uh, they've seen the mistakes of both that we are going for, and probably will come up with a better setup uh, against the office. All right, and uh, talking about pace, uh, we did see, especially in the second goal, claim boy Taibos uh, really showing what kind of pace he has, uh, beating Clement McCarthy there to go on and uh, pass the ball to Kuka. I'm going to check out the highlights now of what was an exciting 90 minutes in totality. And again, uh, Kaza Chiefs, I think in the opening stages of the second half, uh, Trot, they try to show glimpses of attack-minded football with that double substitution they made. There was, there was a positiveness from the side of Kaza Chiefs. Uh, Obua coming in, indicated that he wants to be part of the game, wants to actually bring some changes. And, uh, you know, he, he, him and uh, uh, Stalvik, they actually wanted to show that they can actually bring some changes. But it actually came to a point they then faded off join the rest of the uh, Kaiser Chiefs team. As Doctor indicated, lack of uh, uh, technical discipline in the field was, was, was the order of the day for Kaiser Chiefs. And again, the orchestrating the attacks uh, of Boa. I mean, putting the ball in the box, not too sure if that was a cross or a pass, but in the end, the Kilande must ask himself how come he didn't get that in the back of the net. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, he, it's, it's just that uh, technically, obviously, he, we're talking about a uh, striker with an opponent, you know, he unfortunately couldn't convert it inside the box because of the praise of the opponent. But as tough back, uh, those are some of the things that happens during the game. And uh, we look at this throw in again. You know, three shots in the box, good save by the keeper. So that means there's something wrong with the defense. Yeah. Well, the defense has been struggling quite a bit uh, today. You rightfully mentioned the likes of uh, Patrick Mayer McCarthy, uh, struggling Cyril Zana. A ball played through here. Now, you thought a lot was going to come out of this in the box, but Amoni, how's that? He was on form today, almost none of the match as well. I think if, if it wasn't Stakane to win, definitely it could have gone to Poznan Omoni. He did some brilliant mistakes, both in the first and second half, where you at least expect the goalkeeper to be. Mm. You know, at, at times it was not for him even to hold it, just to carry it out to, to make sure that he, he made a save. That was, it was brilliant today out of his performance. Well, not sure what that was, uh, but <laughs> almost an own goal, but the buyer, <laughs> you know, well, I think sometimes these things do happen, no, right? No, oh, definitely they do happen. Uh, you, you can even ask uh, Trapa here, you know, uh, the likes of Jason Masifa used to 
definitely a huge concern. Uh, I'm sure ever since uh, Golden Arrows has been in the Premier Division, we have never seen Golden Arrows in that, in that, in that position. Always they've actually been among the, the, the other in the top eight or just below, below the top eight with a very entertaining type of football from Golden Arrows. But now lately, it's a serious concern as to what is actually happening within the camp itself of uh, uh, Golden Arrows. Uh, there are some serious uh, uh, concerns that are, I think they need to be eradicated as soon as possible so as to see them off the, the position. But of the serious concern for it is the two teams, both from KZN, mm. Amazulu and Golden Arrows, they are languishing right at the bottom of the law. That's a very, very serious concern, I'm sure. Well, uh, I think uh, fans won't be happy about that. Uh, but also the position of Kaiser Chiefs uh, are in the bottom half uh, in 12th uh, position. Well, look forward to more sports uh, coming through to you uh, tomorrow. That's uh, going to be on Engine Premier Soccer. That's going to be live at uh, half past eight. So join us for all the interviews, all the major highlights, the talking points, everything that you'd want to see and hear as uh, far as the local game is concerned within the Premier Soccer League. But I thank uh, both these uh, gentlemen that are here with me in the studio, Dr. Kumalo, and we'll give him a, a little present. Of course, he's looking a bit down, dejected. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but I, I know that the guy's going to pick up. Good up for Donny. Thank you very much for coming through, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Always a pleasure yeah, indeed uh, having Thanks. the guys uh, coming through. Well, you're going to be joining the Carling Cup uh, action uh, that is happening um, at the moment in that particular game, uh, around about the 33rd minute. Uh, no, no. So uh, plenty of football to watch right here on Super Sport 3. Plenty more, as I said, tomorrow, Asian Premier Tennis. I say, well, okay, okay.